This is how to make a half a wave dipole for your CB radio. You'll need a connector, some plastic, string, and wire. You can use any kind of wire as long as it's kind of thick. Right. First, you take out the connector, you unscrew the nut. That's what it looks like with the two ends. Then you take the plastic and melt a hole into the plastic to fit the connector. Sometimes you have to just make it kind of small so you can try to see if it'll fit right. In my case I made it kind of small. In my case I made it kind of small. So, I have to make it a little bigger so it'll fit. And sometimes you're going to have to, when, when the plastic dries, you'll have to take the um, razor blade and kind of take off some of the plastic that has melted. And it should fit perfectly just like that. Alright, next, you're going to put the ground this is the ground and you're going to slide it on to the coax connector it should look like that one end the one wire is going to go on that end and then the other wire is going to go on that end then you slide it on like so you're going to put a hole right there, you're going to melt a hole right there for the wire and put the wire through it. On that side, that's where that, that end is going to go for the wire. That's how it should look. And when you tighten it down, make sure you put the lock washer on first so it don't come apart and put the nut on and screw it pretty tight. And the, the plastic should squeeze together so it like a squeeze. That's how it should look. Now for the holes. Like I said before, you're going to melt one there. Kind of small. You can always make it bigger just to fit the wire through, but you want it to be tight. And then you put the hole on this side too. That's how it should look, exactly like that. Exactly like that, where you put the holes at, it's exactly how it should be. Now, what I did, I had it strip the wire, the wire off, some of the out, outside of it. This thing has four wires in it, like I said, it's telephone wire. So in my case, I'm going to have to strip every wire. That's how the wire wire looks. It looks kind of thin, but like I said before, when you put it together, it makes a thicker wire so you can run a little bit of, little bit of juice through it. That's how I did it. And twist the wires together. That's how it should look. And you feed the other end of the wire that's not stripped through it. It's a lot easier that way.
that's how it should look and then it look see I have a little bit extra left so I'm going to cut off the other extra and get ready to solder put some a little bit of soldering paste on there because it makes it a lot easier for the solder to bond to it when it's kind of dirty wire or corroded. When you solder you don't have to put too much solder on. Sometimes you have to put a little bit more than enough but it's always good to put more than enough so you know it's gonna be on there pretty good. In my case, I don't solder very good, so whatever works. I know my soldering looks like crap, but it gets the job done, you know? That's how it should look when it's done for that side. The other side's going to be a little bit harder because it's shorter for the, uh, the soldering point. made another hole for the other side for the wire to go through put a little bit of soldering paste on the outside of the the coax connector I already stripped the wire You stick the wire through the other with the other end, just like I did before. And you put it through. Trim off your axis wire so you don't have too much. Twist it a little bit more so you know it's all together. That's how it should look. You can put some soldering paste on there so it cleans it up. And then get ready to solder the outside of the edge of the connector. This would be your ground wire and the other wire would be your radiator wire. Make sure each end of wire is at least eight, eight and seven inches long. I made my wire about nine feet each. Now next, you're going to make the insulators. You put a hole in one end of the insulator, and then you put a hole in the other end. should go like that. You don't want to glue or tape your wire down. You can use duct tape to do it or you can use super glue. But like I said before, don't put your wire down until you check your SWRs. That's how long a string you need for the outside of the insulator to hang it. At one end you're going to tie a loop that looks just like that. It should be that long. About. Don't matter. As long as it's a little bit long. And you're going to stick the one end through the melted hole of the insulator. And you put it like that and you tie a knot at the end so the string won't come out. You pretty much do that for both sides, both wires, and you cut accordingly on both sides. You take a little bit off at a time until you get your SWRs flat. Now on mine, I got it completely flat. And that's how you make the dipole for portable DXing. That's what it looks like. Happy DXing.